This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. This is your WBZH Daily News Roundup for the Buzz of the North, 910 a.m. in Hayward. For 910 WBZH News, I'm James Kelly. Authorities are searching for answers in the wake of a fourth fire in the southwest Sawyer County area within one week. According to the Sawyer County Sheriff's Office, the first three fires all occurred between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. last Monday within about 10 miles of each other. On Saturday night, another fire occurred at DJ's Mart in Radisson Township. Nobody was reported injured in the fires. Sheriff's Office officials say they're working with the Wisconsin Department of Justice to investigate the fires and are looking for any information from the public. Efforts to make sure every kid in the Ashland area gets some presents during the holiday season are underway. Registration is officially open for the Ashland Firefighters Toy Drive and drop-off locations are available across the area. Parents can register for the Toy Drive by contacting the fire department between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday before December 11th. Residents interested in donating toys for the drive can do so at any local business that has a banner for the drive in their window or by taking them directly to the fire department. Law enforcement authorities in northern Wisconsin are asking hunters to be on the lookout for signs of two missing persons this season. The Bayfield County Sheriff's Office and Sawyer County Sheriff's Office are looking for information on two elderly residents who have been missing for years, Joy Lenz, who went missing from Cable in 2022, and Norbert Dansman, who went missing from the Northern Lights Motel in winter in 2019. If hunters notice anything suspicious while out in the woods, they should contact law enforcement authorities. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources is reporting a good start to the gun deer hunt season. DNR officials say they saw a great turnout on Saturday for the season opener, from individual hunters to families out in the woods together. They also say there were no injuries or incidents to report from the season opener. As the season continues this week, officials are reminding hunters to continue wearing their bright orange gear to make themselves more visible to other hunters and prepare themselves for colder temperatures later in the week. As the holiday travel season gets underway, AAA officials are expecting a record number of Wisconsin residents to be hitting the roads. The current record was set in 2019 before the COVID-19 pandemic started to keep people home, but last year's travel numbers almost reached that record again. This year, officials are expecting nearly 1.6 million residents to be out on the roads between Tuesday and next Monday. Officials are reminding residents to build in extra travel time in their plans, follow the speed limits, and do not drive under the influence. Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources officials are asking hunters to consider purchasing antlerless deer permits in farmland zones during the hunting season. Officials say the state has an especially high whitetail herd population this year, and those deer can cause property damage, crop damage, and often get into the roadways, causing accidents. The deer hunting license generally authorizes hunters to kill one buck and one doe, but in some areas, hunters may be allowed to purchase additional antlerless deer permits for $12 each. A Rice Lake man is facing drug trafficking charges that could land him in prison for decades. According to the Barron County Sheriff's Department, 34-year-old David Anderson was accused of distributing and possessing with intent to distribute methamphetamines as well as maintaining a drug trafficking premises. Court records say Anderson was in possession of more than 50 grams of methamphetamines during the course of their investigation in early April. If convicted on that charge, he could be facing as much as 40 years in prison. Two northern Wisconsin healthcare facilities have been upgraded to level 4 trauma centers. According to the Wisconsin Department of Health, Tamarack Health Ashland Medical Center and Hayward Medical Center received the designations for their advanced life support, diagnostic testing, and stabilization medical services. The designation allows the facilities to offer better equipment, higher levels of care, and expedite the process of transferring patients to other facilities if they needed specialized care. The region only has a handful of trauma centers. Energy officials are reminding hunters to check the heating systems at their cabin during the gun deer hunt season. For hunters who may not visit their cabins regularly, restarting the heating system or using a portable heater inside could cause higher carbon monoxide levels. Officials are also reminding hunters to check the batteries in their carbon monoxide detectors or buy one if they haven't already, as the gas is odorless and essentially invisible. Symptoms related to carbon monoxide inhalation include dizziness, nausea, and potentially unconsciousness. 
Wisconsin residents are paying a smaller tax burden than most other states. According to a report from the Wisconsin Policy Forum, limits on local property and income taxes combined with average wages rising by about 9 percent has led to the lowest tax rate burden compared to the national average ever for the state. Wisconsin now ranks 35th in tax burden, which is the state's lowest ranking on record. The report also credited Governor Tony Evers lowering the third income tax bracket in 2021 for contributing to the falling tax burden. For 910 WBZH News, I'm James Kelly. A big win for the Packers. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Packers beat the 49ers 38-10. Green Bay running back Josh Jacobs rushed for 106 yards on 26 carries, scoring three touchdowns. Head coach Matt LaFleur. You know that number eight out there? Did you see how many tackles he, or how many people he made him miss? Um, it was pretty impressive. I think early on that got us going. You know, and we thought we could hit them with some of the downhill stuff. Um, obviously, they're missing a key part to that defense. Two starters, actually. And so, uh, but I thought, you know, we did what we had to do. 49ers head coach Kyle Shanahan. You know, the, the first half, just the run defense was real disappointing. Um, you know, I thought we got out of a gaps a couple of number, a number of times. I thought we had way too many missed tackles. Um, just them being able to control that clock in the first half was one of the worst ones I've been a part of just for as far as a half. The Packers improved to 8-3. and three. They host the Miami Dolphins this Thursday night at Lambeau Field. Elsewhere in the NFL, the Bears losing to the Vikings in Chicago 30-27 to in overtime. The Bears have now lost five in a row. College basketball, the Wisconsin men's team with an 81-75 to victory over Pittsburgh to win the Greenbrier Tournament title in Orlando. The Badgers now 7-0. and With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. The new Peacock streamer Day of the Jackal dropped November 14th and has been critically acclaimed and popular with viewers. According to Variety, the show will be picked up for a season two. The action thriller stars Eddie Redmayne as a hired assassin who is also being hunted by a professional killer equally as skilled. Redmayne's credits include Les Mis and The Trial of the Chicago 7, and he is also Oscar nominated. The first season has 10 episodes and new shows drop Thursday nights. That's a pretty quick commitment to a season two, but not as fast as the John Hamm show, Your Friends and Neighbors. Apple TV has already announced a season two pickup for the show that hasn't even premiered yet. That's right, season one isn't available till April 11th. Oftentimes after an election, regardless of which party won, people say they are leaving America. It's usually an emotional knee-jerk reaction, but Ellen DeGeneres is actually leaving. The talk show host says she is not only headed to the UK due to the election results a couple weeks ago, but she is also quitting show business. No one is happier to hear this than those who work for her. Lady Gaga's new song, Die With A Smile, is the fastest ever to reach 1 billion streams on Spotify. The song, which was a collaboration with Bruno Mars, has also picked up two Grammy nominations, all this on the heels of the announcement that Gaga will headline at next year's Coachella Festival. That ought to help her get that horrible Joker 2 taste out of her mouth. Timothy Chalamet's performance in the Bob Dylan biopic A Complete Unknown is getting Oscar buzz. Entertainment industry insiders are saying this is the best performance Chalamet has ever given and placing him as the Academy Award frontrunner in the Best Actor category. The Oscar chatter started after a screening on the Fox lot in L.A. last week, which gave insiders a first look at Chalamet's performance. A Complete Unknown hits theaters Christmas Day. Speaking of the Oscars, Chalamet's co-star in A Complete Unknown, Monica Barbaro, is also getting Oscar buzz in the Best Supporting Actress category, according to Variety. Variety put out its list of frontrunners in the category, which also included Ariana Grande for Wicked, Zoe Saldana for Emilia Perez, and Isabella Rossellini for Conclave. Looks like I got snubbed again, folks. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Light snow will continue this morning, tapering off this afternoon with uh, about another inch or so possible by the time it winds down. Falling temperatures, too. We're going to drop into the mid-20s by late this afternoon. Tonight, breezy, 16 tomorrow, partly cloudy and a bit colder with a high of only 27. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Right now, it's 31. That's your WBZH Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at buzzofthenorth.com. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 